Hi guys, in a previous video I spoke about how I became a conference interpreter. Today I wanted to talk about my route into football commentary. Commentating was always something I enjoyed right through my childhood, but it was only during my teenage years that I began to explore whether or not I could turn it into a career. Just to give you an example of just what a commentary nut I was, I remember at one stage commentating on myself playing a tennis match against uh, an old school friend, uh, a running commentary point by point, stroke for stroke. Answer my question! The question, jerk! Needless to say, this is not the dumb thing. Bad form, bad show, bad etiquette. Uh, so much so, in fact, that when you comment on two professionals playing tennis, you're completely silent during the point. So you can only imagine just how off-putting it was for my opponent to hear me talking over every single point. I'm not even sure you can file that under gamesmanship or mind games. It's just bad sportsmanship. But there you go, a big commentary nut, constantly commentating, you couldn't shut me up, constantly talking. But at that time, we're talking about 2004, there wasn't necessarily uh, a well-worn, a well-established route into sports broadcasting, uh, even though there is now a proliferation of uh, degrees so that you can break into the industry. In fact, there are even degrees now, believe it or not, in uh, eSports, but that's probably for another day. So I decided to study at university and study what I was best at, which was French uh, at that time, and then began studying Italian as well, ab initio, uh, from scratch. I think it also would have been quite a hard sell uh, to convince my parents that I was going to university to study to become a football commentator. It just really wasn't the dumb thing. So once I got to university in my second year, I began to explore how to possibly become uh, a football commentator. And I was quite lucky in that the RNIB, the Royal National Institute of the Blind, uh, set up a scheme in partnership with the BBC entitled Soccer Sight. Uh, they had discovered that there was a lack of accessibility for blind and partially sighted football supporters that were going to the stadium, still wanted to uh, maximise the matchday experience, but didn't feel they were necessarily getting the right coverage. For whatever reason, uh, perhaps there wasn't a radio broadcast on that specific match, or if there was, uh, as is the way with radio, maybe they would cut away for updates from uh, other grounds, or they might... Uh, do some uh, advertising, which is why you could occasionally miss some salient points from the matches. So they had discovered that there was scope and there was a market for uh, in-stadium audio description, basically uh, a running radio commentary. It's a very nuanced difference uh, of the match whilst going on, which was great for a budding commentator like myself, the ability to be a volunteer and to get some experience, which is why I applied for this competition. I was accepted uh, onto the finals day which was held at Highbury and we were trained by a very experienced uh, BBC broadcaster, Rob Nothman. We were shown the ins and outs of how to do uh, radio commentary in particular uh, and it was all very positive, there was some encouraging feedback and there was talk about uh, linking me up with uh, a London club because I was based in the capital at that time to become their regular uh, audio describer for their home matches in the league. Unfortunately, it never came to pass uh, and it all fell through at the 11th hour. That was my second year of university. I forgot all about it for the next year because I went away and studied uh, on the Erasmus program in uh, Italy uh, and then in France. But when I came back for the final year of my bachelor's degree, I thought I'm gonna have another crack at trying to break into commentary. So once again, got back in touch with the RNIB. Uh, the previous training day, as I said, was held at Arsenal's former stadium, Highbury. This, round, this time around, it was held at uh, Upton Park, which was West Ham's former ground. So I essentially did the same training session again. There were some minor tweaks, some changes to the programme, but good to get some reps in. Once again, good to uh, just have an opportunity to interact with the uh, broadcast journalist from the BBC. But once again, it all came to nothing. No London clubs had any vacancies for any uh, match day audio describers at that particular time. So once again, I moved abroad and forgot all about it. I moved to uh, Brindisi in the south of Italy for one year and then Avignon in the south of France for another year before then deciding to return to the UK to study uh, on the master's course at the University of Bath to become a conference interpreter. And finally, I said to myself, maybe it's third time lucky. You're going to be in the UK for at least a year doing this Masters. Have one last crack at trying to break into football commentary. Got in touch with the RNIB. Unfortunately, the scheme had been discontinued, but they encouraged me to contact the football clubs in the local area. So I got hold of Swindon Town, 
uh, to no avail. There was nothing doing there. And then I also contacted Bristol City and finally I struck gold. They told me that they had the Bristol Hospital Broadcast Service which had uh, live radio commentary of uh, Bristol City's matches to uh, eight hospitals in and around the city uh, and I got an opportunity then. That was October of 2010. But my real break came in January of 2011. A colleague, a fellow student on my conference interpreting master's course flagged up a, a job ad Top language jobs were looking for a multilingual football commentator to work in West London. Uh, French, Italian, Spanish and Mandarin Chinese were the languages required. And I thought, yes, I'm not a native speaker of Italian or French. However, I do have experience as a commentator, albeit three months at that stage. Uh, and I also think this is what I was born to do. I think I've got solid technique. I'm going to give it a go. Let's see if I can really combine this passion for foreign languages and my passion for commentary. So I applied for the job and I got accepted along with uh, a number of others. I was able to then go and work as a French and Italian uh, commentator on the watch and bet service provided by a company in uh, West London. And I was fortunate in that I got in really uh, at ground level because the system was just being put together. It was uh, a new service which was being provided and so I was able to uh, be part of that first batch of recruitment. Nevertheless, I had to do a lot of prep. I really spent hours poring over football terms, glossaries, doing a lot of practice, getting feedback from native speakers uh, and from my teachers as well. But it's fair to say I never felt completely comfortable uh, doing the multilingual commentary because I was a native speaker and perhaps training as a conference interpreter made me acutely aware uh, of just what a native speaker can offer. Nevertheless, I thought this is a good way to get some reps under my belt. This is a good way to practice my spoken languages as well and of course naturally it provided uh, a source of income. It was a busy period between January and June of 2011. Uh, I was studying at Bath during the week on my conference interpreting masters and then heading down to uh, West London Feltham in particular on the weekend to do often three matches on a Saturday and three matches on a Sunday before getting the last train back on a Sunday evening. Busy but it really set me up for when I graduated from Bath, I was able to move to London and support myself financially as a football commentator. But I always felt that I didn't really have much of a future uh, as a broadcaster working in foreign languages. I felt that English would be the right route for me and it's really what I wanted to do. So when I moved to London, I was uh, able then to once again contact clubs that had previously been involved in that soccer site scheme with the RNIB and the BBC. Uh, and finally, I got my opportunity to uh, link up with a London club. It was uh, Queen's Park Rangers QPR on that occasion. So finally, I had this opportunity to do some language work, translation and interpreting jobs on the one hand. I was getting paid to do multilingual commentary on the other. And I was also developing as a commentator in my mother tongue English by working uh, as a volunteer on the Premier League so that was a, a really nice setup but after 18 months uh, of working as a multilingual commentator I'd grown a bit weary uh, I felt that I had been pigeonholed as uh, a foreign commentator which was uh, quite frustrating given that I was an English native speaker and I felt I was improving all the time uh, by working uh, as a commentator on uh, QPR matches, which is why, and this is the big break in my career really, I decided to actually move abroad. Yes, the great irony is that I had become pigeonholed in London where I was predominantly commentating in French and Italian. So I had to move from London where I was commentating in Italian to Italy, to Milan, to be able to commentate in English on the Italian world feed, commentating on Serie A, Serie B and Coppa Italia matches for the international audience. This was a bold move, but one which has certainly uh, paid off. Uh, I've been here on off now since 2013, albeit with a, uh, a slight parenthesis when I moved to Lisbon to learn Portuguese and worked for Benfica, again, being able to commentate abroad. And I must say, uh, I really should acknowledge the fact that as English native speakers, we are so fortunate to be able to go around the world either teaching English or even with this uh, large number of world feeds where there is commentary provided on foreign leagues in English and then uh, broadcast partners can decide to use that service uh, whether or not they wish to. So it was a bit of a gamble, but in the intervening 18 months, I had been able to build up a steady body of freelance work, which meant that I was able to really uh, take this gamble, take this chance. Uh, this is, of course, all pre-Brexit, but I was able to move from London to Italy from uh, one day to the next. So I think this story really shows the value of persistence, of perseverance, 
Uh, had a couple of early setbacks. The RNIB training sessions both came to nothing on those first two occasions. Finally got that break with Bristol City. But I also think it's important to stress at times, just say yes and then figure out the details later. Uh, perhaps theoretically I could have held my hands up and said, you know what, this is a multilingual commentary job. I'm neither a native speaker in French nor in Italian. Uh, I don't think I'm up to doing the job. But instead I said yes uh, and I prepared as best I could and I did the best job I could do, albeit constantly keeping in mind the fact that uh, I didn't think this was necessary in a long-lasting endeavour. But it was a means to an end. It got me plenty of reps under my belt, lots of uh, practice as a commentator allowed me to support myself financially uh, and then it, it further strengthened the view that I wanted to be a commentator and I felt I could do a good job uh, certainly in my own language. I must say that commentating in French and Italian actually ended up helping me in terms of my career as a conference interpreter specifically with regards to football where more often than not when you're working in a press conference you need to work biactively. Uh, it's no mean feat to be able to speak confidently uh, in a foreign language at the best of times, let alone when you're trying to interpret quickly, I might add, as is a slight specification of those football press conferences, in front of a large uh, media audience. But certainly, having trained as a football commentator, having been able to uh, describe a match for 90 minutes, and above all, to withstand the pressure of doing all that in front of... Uh, native speaker colleagues because naturally there are other French and Italian nationals there doing other games certainly helped me in the long run with regards to my uh, career as a, a conference interpreter working within football. So there you have it, I now work as a football commentator amongst other things. I do a couple of uh, matches from Italy's Serie A every single weekend and then I occasionally do international matches from London during the international breaks. Uh, something I really wanted to do ever since my teenage years, as I said, and now at the tender age of 34, I finally feel like I'm getting somewhere. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. As ever, a thumbs up is the easiest, clearest, most visible way to do so. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and please comment. I really enjoy reading those, and I like to reply as well. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.